A new beta version of Sim Update number 3 beta has been released. In this video, we're gonna look at some real important steps which you need to perform. But first, let's roll the intro. So yesterday a new build was released for sim update number 3 beta which bumps up the version to version 1.5.23.0. This version has an important I would say fix and that fix is really important but also has a lot of prerequisites and I say a lot it's only one prerequisite but it's a big one. You need to do a full clean and uninstall or install sorry of Flight Simulator 2024, which means that you need to completely remove it and then reinstall it. Besides that, there's a fixed cockpit, buttons do not light up correctly to reflect the state. Right? I also experienced it that if you press the button, it simply didn't light up. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to fully reinstall Flight Simulator 2024. To do that, I'm gonna show you the simple way. And the simple way is simply search for Flight Simulator 2024 in your start menu and then hit the uninstall button over here. This will ask for confirmation. You will say uninstall and then will uh, likely pop up. And then we can say, okay, hey, yes, remove it. And then within a few seconds, it has been removed. However, there's also one important step which you need to do. And that's to make sure that it, it is ha really has been removed uh, because I... It would be a pity if it has been partially removed. I didn't experience this issue, but it's just to be 100% sure. To do that, you go to the percentage local updater percentage, which I just typed in, then go to the packages folder. And inside the packages folder, you will search for Microsoft.limitless. Uh, you, you don't see it here, right? Which is a good sign. Uh, don't, I would say, make a mistake and delete the flight simulator uh, folder, the Microsoft flight simulator folder, because then you will remove flight simulator 2020 completely and likely you won't want to do that. Once you've done that, you can go to your community folder because in some cases, it could be that you remove the community folder outside of the normal folder, which is the limitless folder. I do expect it if you did that, then the limitless folder will still be there if you put things in a community folder. But in my case, I moved them out and moved them to a separate folder, which is called MSOS 2024. You see that the official packages are here, right? And uh, there's also, I would say, uh, one uh, called here, which is community. So I'm gonna rename that to underscore community. And the other folders are, uh, let's say, likely empty, but I'm always validating that to be 100% sure. Here you can see that there is an, I would say, the A320 Neo CVT is there. So I could decide to remove it from here just to be 100% sure, right? If, let's say, it's needed, right, a flat cemetery uh, will install it again. And then we've got these stream packages, which is all the uh, crap which, uh, I'll say, comes by default. And I'm also going to delete that one completely because I don't want to have it installed. I want to make sure that I always have the latest and greatest, of course, uh, by default. Uh, it might take some time before it's deleting this uh, because there's I would say, pretty much data in it. You can see this is the Microsoft 5 seconds. It takes a little bit longer. It says, okay, here items remaining. So let's wait for it uh, until it has been removed. The other option, of course, is to rename the MSFS 2024 folder completely to a different name. Uh, then it won't be able to use it. Uh, so let's, uh, let's wait for it. Uh, once it's been removed and it has done it now, you can start with the reinstallation process. And the reinstallation process goes the quickest via the store. Inside the store, you can go to your library, which contains all the items which you bought in the past from, I would say, Asobo or Microsoft. And you can simply search for the Flight Simulator 2024 item there and then click install. That will not take, I would say, extremely long, but it will take long enough that I'm not going to, I would say, uh, bore you with, uh, re I would say, looking at it. Uh, so I'm going to 
per se pre, uh, premium deluxe is the, is the version I want to install. And then I say, okay, hey, ask me these options for every, well, that's up to me, right? I'm gonna say install, that will be cute. And then you can monitor the progress uh, over here. As you can see, it needs to download uh, eight gig, but believe me, it needs to download a little bit more. So I'm gonna pause the recording now. And then once it has been completed, I will say continue recording again. So as you can see, it has now been installed, which is nice, which means it also is available in the start menu. Yes, it is. So that's good. But there is one thing which we first need to do, and that's to make sure that the DLSS swapper is correctly configured. Because by default, you can see it's not using the latest version of NVIDIA. So we're going to change that. So we're going to press 3.10.3 .3. if you didn't install it for example uh, 3.10.1 was not uh, downloaded on this machine you can say hey it requires download and then you first need to download it i will show you first how to do that so i'm gonna go to the library there you will find the different versions in this case 3.10.3 .3. you click the download button which has now been let's say changed to this button and you do the same thing for the dss frame generation uh, rate construction you can do it but it hasn't much effect because only the first two are the most important ones once you've done that you can press the uh, version here and it should look like this so you're going to change this to 3.10.3 .3, hit swap and do the same thing for this 3.10.3 .3, hit swap and then it should be okay you can see that i would say in my case the fsr version is also not updated so i could also change that one but before doing that there's one important thing is that you need to make sure that you set the dss preset to k if you don't see this field then make sure that the dss swapper has been updated to the latest version right if you didn't do that make sure you do that so I'm going to fix the FSR one. So I'm going to press FSR, uh, DirectX, and then say, okay, I want to have the latest and the greatest, and then go back and then I can hopefully change it. Yes, I cannot change it. And then say swap. And now everything should be okay. So once you've done that, you can also check the NVIDIA app because that's really important. However, there is a small warning about this one is that you might not be able to change it here because I also experienced it. And here it says it's unable to retrieve the current values starting and closing the game wrap or adding the uh, settings uh, should fix the problem. So what you likely first need to do is start Flight Simulator. So let me do that because I already corrected here. Uh, for starting Flight Simulator, I'm not going to let you watch this screen because it's really boring, right? It will ask me for uh, some dependencies which I need to install and then we'll go to the full process. So we'll pause the recording and we'll continue once Flight Simulator has started. So Flight Simulator has started, so let's hit the start button now and then check the release notes. Inside the release notes, we see that it has been updated to version 1.5.23.0, which is the latest version and contains all the fixes, which is nice. The other thing you can, of course, do is check the settings menu and make sure that the settings are set correctly, right? Uh, I would say in my case, it restored it correctly as far as I can see. Uh, but I would say I definitely would recommend you to validate yourself also. Uh, besides that, there's of course the important option to go to the advanced options and then make sure that the uh, options over here are set correctly, right? So if you, I would say, enable the third person uh, view camera and the other things, make sure that they are set correctly. Also, if you want to enable the developer mode, you can switch it on from here, but that's everything you can do from this menu. The other thing, of course, which is really important is that you go to the marketplace and inside the marketplace, you will have the option to go to the My Library. And inside the My Library, then of course you can download the options, right? Download the packages if you prefer to use the download versions instead of the streamed versions of Flight Simulator 2024 content. I'm just going to do it because I've got a say, pretty stable internet connection. But if you don't have, I definitely uh, recommend you to do that. And you can simply do that by clicking the base content. If you do that, you will have an option here which says download and that will re-download all the content. Uh, if you decide to move the community folder to a different folder, you can also do that by pressing the, uh, say, gear here and then press modify, right? Remember that we changed the folder, so I'm going to say modify and then I'm going to go and move it to the, my default folder, which is MSFS uh, 2024 in this case. 
and then say select folder that will ask me for confirmation and now the folder has been updated i can press escape i can say quit to the desktop because we're gonna check some settings before let's say we're continuing the first one of course is make sure that it has been set correctly so we're gonna go to the uh msfs and here you see that everything has been set there including a temporary mirror not sure why that has been created but hey that will likely be fixed in the future and there's that community folder which i already created uh, so what you can do is after you confirmed everything works correctly you can change it again to community folder and then it should be okay let's go back to the nvidia setting right because we now started flight simulator so let's see if it also fixed the issue so we're going to go to the graphics and here you can see it's uh, not optimized for flight simulator 2024 that has to do with of course some settings which are modified so it has now switched to recommended which is pretty interesting uh so maybe i was a little bit too early with the conclusion uh and i can i would say make sure that the settings are correctly set uh, especially I would say the uh, RTX or frame generation, super generation are important, right? Uh, but if I scroll down, the most important settings are over here. The DSS override model presets and the DSS override super resolution. Make sure that they're set to use the app 3D application setting, which means it will use the DSS swapper setting. If it's not set to that setting, make sure that you change it. You can simply change it and then say, hey, use the same setting for all DSS technologies and then change it to this one, which will, I would say, kind of change every old settings and then hit apply. Uh, once you've done that, you should be good to go and you can continue testing. Sim update number three, beta for Flight Simulator 2024. Now here in this video where we looked at the, how to completely reinstall Flight Simulator 2024. As part of the latest beta release, it's recommended to do it because they made some uh, huge changes, which will only, would say, work perfectly if you completely reinstall Flight Simulator 2024, which is not a lot of work, as you could see, because we kind of did it really quick. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then hit the like button and keep an eye on my channel for some new videos the coming weeks because I've got some new ideas. So see you back hopefully next time.